Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be called, And They Worshipped the Dragon. That comes from Revelation chapter 13 and verse 4. Now, Revelation is the last book in the Bible. A lot of it is future. Some of it was present. Some of it was in the past. The Bible is like that. Sometimes the Bible uses symbolism, figures of speech. Other times it's literal. So the thing is, we have to figure out which is which. Haven't you always heard the so-called atheists when they're talking about what happened in the Garden of Eden and they make fun of you like, oh yeah, talking snakes hanging from an apple tree. Well, yeah, that's, that's what they want you to believe, you know. I mean, totally, that's what they want us to believe. But is that the case? No. So, this is going to be the introduction. I don't know how many parts this is going to be. Uh, this is going to be kind of an in-depth study. No, well, not in-depth, but we're going to go over Satan, his tricks, and how it's going to apply in the latter days or end times. Now, let's take a look. Now, I'm probably going to have to make these less than 30 minutes. Uh, for those of you that don't know it, I am, you're probably listening to this on YouTube, but in case YouTube boots me off, I'm also on minds.com, M-I-N-D-S dot com. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with Colin Flaherty, don't make the black kids angry. That's his new channel. And then there is BitChute, B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E. I'm also on there. Well, Minds.com changed their upload policy that you can't uh, uh, upload any video longer than 30 minutes. They didn't notify me. So here it is. I made a you know an hour-long video try to upload it and it wouldn't upload and uh, and it was only later that I find out so if I want to upload videos to mines it's got to be under 30 minutes alright so how do we know when something is literal in the Bible or a figure of speech well let's take a look at the book of James James is an interesting guy. He had a father named Joseph, and he had a mother named Mary. And guess what? He grew up with a guy named Jesus. He was a brother of the flesh, anyways. All right, James chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Isn't it interesting? A lot of churches will say, well, you know, the, the 12 tribes, they don't exist anymore. They're lost. But Jesus, but uh, James says he's a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he addresses his letter to the 12 tribes, which are scattered abroad, greeting. You see, the 12 tribes, they're only lost to the demon nominational churches. They're not lost to God. They're not lost to Jesus. And James evidently knew that they existed. So how come the churches don't know? You're going to find that most churches exist to lead you away from the truth of the Bible. Some of them doing it willingly. Others because that's what they were taught. Uh, you know, God will decide which is which. All right, verse 2. My brethren, 
Count it all joy, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. When things are bad, be patient, because this too shall pass. That's, yeah, patience. You know, uh, everybody wants, you know, you go through the drive in drive through in McDonald's, and they want their Happy Meal in one minute or less. But the Bible teaches patience. Verse 4, But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Verse 5, listen carefully. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Good advice. If you don't understand something in the Bible, ask the Lord to show you. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You know, you, you can't worship uh, the Lord and then worship the devil. It doesn't work. Now, just a little background. You know, I... Uh, went to a private Baptist school in middle school, junior high, whatever they want you want to call it. And I believed. And, you know, I used to, I turned the TV on, you know, Sunday morning. Uh, and watched all the TV preachers. And, you know, even as a middle school kid or junior high school kid, Let's see, what grade was I in? Eighth. Eighth grade. I mean, I knew that was for fake. I mean, you know, all those guys ever wanted was money. You know, bless of the Lord, uh, send a him uh, your uh, money. Here's our address. Yeah, send the Lord the money. Here's our address. So, you know, I was looking for an excuse to fall away. Uh, and I did in high school. Got in with the wrong crowd for many, many, many years. But, uh, you know, I, I I could see that, you know, here it is. They, they teach uh, all, the, all the Old Testament laws were done away with, you know. And yet, except for one, the tithe. Oh, yeah, you got a tithe. All the other laws are done away with, but you got a tithe. Whatever. So... Uh, it doesn't take long to figure out uh, that, you know, they're a bunch of frauds, you know. What is it, Jesse Duplantis, if I'm pronouncing his name right, wants a, 50, a new $54 million Learjet, or jet, I don't know. I don't know if it's a Learjet, but I don't know. All right, in Matthew... Chapter 13, in verse 11. And the disciples came and said unto him, To who? Jesus. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He, Jesus, he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. You see, sometimes the Lord will give if wisdom. So, you know, if you seek the Lord with all your heart, he'll give you wisdom and understanding. But... You know, the other people, it's like, oh, pff, yeah, yeah, Garden of Eden, a, a, a talking snake hanging from an apple tree, right. 
Well, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Bingo. Well, let's keep reading. Verse 14. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. That's the Greek rending of, of Isaiah. Which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have uh, they have closed. See, they close their eyes. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them. And to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. See, there's a lot of people in the Old Testament that wanted to understand things, and they couldn't, because it wasn't time. Let's go to the book of Daniel. Daniel was one of those prophets that was greatly beloved of the Lord. We're going to go to chapter 12. Verse 1, And at that time shall Michael stand up. Well, we're talking about Michael the, the angel. The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble. A time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. What book? The book of life. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, Shut up the words and seal the book. In other words, close the book. That's it. And seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. People, let me tell you something. Knowledge is increased. Not, not good knowledge, but bad knowledge. I mean, let's face it. hundred and, you know, 200 years ago, People were still using horses for transportation. In the last 200 years, we've gone from trains to automobiles to airplanes to jets, rockets. You know, for over 5,500 years, people used horses. And in the last 200 years, look at the explosion of just knowledge we've had. I mean, just... Uh, the kids of today, they've never known a time when they didn't have a smartphone or a, or a computer. I mean, when I was uh, young, only the military and big businesses had computers. Now, people have phones that have more computing power than uh, what NASA had when they were doing their, uh, in the 60s. So, verse 5. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two. Now, these are obviously angels. The one on the side of the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? You know, how long is it going to be to the, till the end? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. Now, people, what, 
what they call the, the Great Tribulation. A time is a year. Times is two and a half. So it's going to be three and a half years, 42 months. We could prove that in the book of Revelation. Matter of fact, we should, I guess. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 12. We'll probably come back. Oh, uh, let's see. Revelation 12, verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand Two hundred and three score days. Okay, and let's see. Verse 14. And the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. So, Let's see, let's, you know, 1,260 days is about three and a half years. All right, you want another witness, Revelation 11 and verse 2. But the court which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. That word Gentiles is same word as nations. Same word translated. I, I don't know why the King James translators did that. I'm not saying it's an error. I'm just saying the same word was translated. Sometimes it was translated as Gentiles. Sometimes they translated it as nations. I don't know why they were inconsistent. Maybe it was to hide something from people that don't love God. Unless God shows you these things, you don't know. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Well, people, that's three and a half years. Revelation 13, 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great bla uh, things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And we're talking about the tribulation period here. So a time, times, and half a time, 1260 days, 42 months, I mean, the Bible explains the Bible if you let it. All right, let's go back to Daniel. Uh, let's see. All right, Daniel 12 and verse 7. Uh, and I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times, and a half, and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? He's asking, explain this to me, I don't understand. Verse 9, And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the end, uh, I'm sorry, till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white. Somebody give the black Hebrews a, uh, a memo here, will you? Many shall be purified and made white and tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. Didn't we just read basically that about the uh, why God spoke in parables? Yeah. He hides it from the wicked. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and thirty and five and thirty days. But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end 
of the days. Now, a lot of people, uh, how do I put this? A lot of people wonder, why doesn't God destroy Satan now and just, you know, get, get this over with? Well, you got to realize something. This is kind of like a test. Really, you think about it. Life is a test. And when you go face the Lord, either at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, which is where the wicked are going to be judged at the end of the millennium, uh, people are, you know, they're going to be, they're going to know they were in the wrong. I mean, you know, <laughs> there's... That's just the way it is. They're going to be tested. Are you worthy for eternal life or are you going to be shown everlasting contempt and destruction? Now, there are Satanists that will tell you that uh, God can't destroy Satan. And they actually, I, I guess they believe in this. I you know, I mean, after all, God created Satan, but he created him good. You know, but this is, it's a test. So let's take a look at a couple things here. Now, in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 33, Jesus said, But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my father, which is in heaven. So, let's face it, people. If, if, you know, if they catch, let's say Christianity becomes illegal. And believe me, it's coming. There's going to come a day when it is going to be illegal to be a Christian. Matter of fact, look up the Noahide laws. N-O-A-H-I-D-E. Uh, uh, law number one. All Christians are in violation of that. You know what's interesting is the penalty for that, violating that, is death. Method of execution? Beheading. Where did we read that before? Oh, uh, how about Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4? And I saw thrones. And they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not, not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Well, Jesus says that if you deny him before men, that, they, that he will deny you before the Father. You don't want to ever hear those words. All right, let's take a look at Matthew chapter 7. Jesus speaking. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Huh, isn't that interesting? It says that he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Well, isn't it, shouldn't we find out what God, uh, God the Father's will is and do it? I mean, just because you call Jesus Christ Lord, that doesn't mean nothing. Verse 2. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out, uh, have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Oh yeah, we, we, we set up soup kitchens, and we handed out bread, and gave clothes to the, you know, the homeless, and did, we did all these things. Of course, we were getting uh, a tax break. <laughs> oh yeah. 
Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Sounds like a whole bunch of churches, don't it? Oh, yeah. So, just because you go to a place where they call Jesus Christ Lord, if they don't do the will of the Father, that's, they got a problem. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 14, starting in verse 9. So, you know, I've heard people say, well, you know, all you got to do is believe on Jesus. That's it. Just believe. Well, you know, that's the thing. Let's take a look at James chapter 2 real quick. All right, let's go to James chapter 2. Verse 13, For he shall have judgment without mercy that hath showed no mercy. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. So if you want to be shown mercy, you better show, you yourself show mercy. Verse 14, What, the, what doth it profit, my brethren? Though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? Good question. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Yeah. You see somebody that's starving to freezing and starving to death, and, and you don't even invite them in the house and give them some warm clothes and a, and a meal? And you're, and you're going to say that you got faith? Really? What is, uh, you know, what does it profit? Verse 17. Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. You see, we're not saved by what we do, but your works are going to reflect what you believe. I mean, let's face it. You know, that's that's the way it is. I mean, if if you... If you believe in the Lord, you're going to help one of the Lord's children if they're in need. Even so faith, verse 17, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God? Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. See, people, even the devils believe in God. But their works are evil. Shouldn't our works be righteous? They should. All right, uh, this is going to be the end of the introduction because i got to keep this under 30 minutes. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.